Amen. Children ages four through second grade are now dismissed for wonders of worship. Let us stand for the reading of God's word as we read from the first letter of John, chapter 1, verses 5 through 10. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, and have, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus his Son cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We come before you and, and ask that you would bless us your word, that you would speak to us in the power of your spirit, open our hearts, help us hear and see Christ. And we ask that you would bless us and strengthen our faith that we might walk with you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. Well, this morning I'd like to begin first with a, a, a brief review of the explanation that John gave for writing his letter. He made clear in verse 3 that his desire for those who are receiving his letter is that they would participate in the same fellowship that he and the other apostles enjoy, which is a fellowship with the Father and with the Son. Their sharing in this fellowship would make his joy complete. And such a fellowship can be shared only if it originates in a shared faith. There is a joy that comes with this, this fellowship. It's the joy of salvation. And it was first revealed in the day of Christ's resurrection. Jesus spoke of this joy when he was speaking with his disciples about his departure, which would soon come to pass by means of his death. In John 16, verse 22, he said, So also you have sorrow now, but I will see you again, and your hearts will rejoice, and no one will take your joy from you. The Apostle John wants his readers to experience this fellowship and this joy that comes through faith in Christ. And this is why this first chapter is so important to us. John is writing about what it means to have faith and fellowship with God. And fellowship with God is what we really need and want. It is a fellowship that brings real joy. And this joy cannot be separated from real love and real peace, because love, joy, and peace come from God, and they come together as the fruit of the Holy Spirit, as Paul writes in Galatians 5.22. Real love, real joy, real peace come from a relationship with the most important person in your life, God. God is truly the most important person in your life, and you need to have fellowship with him. And you need to continue in that fellowship. Well, at this point, let me, let me share with you briefly how I came to know this fellowship with God and this joy and 
God's love and peace. It was during the beginning of my junior year in college. I was a very troubled soul at the time. I had been introduced to church earlier as an adolescent, and what I understood from my church experience was that I needed to be a good person if I was going to have God's approval. But as a teenager, the one thing <laughs> I kept proving to myself over and over was that I was not a good person. And so I gave up on the idea of God entirely and embraced the idea of evolution and of a world where there was no God and no soul, only this physical universe and bare chance, which made life seem so meaningless. And yet I still carried around this great sense of guilt. Somehow, God led me to begin reading the Bible in search of answers to the meaning of life. I can't really explain why. <laughs> he just did. And one day, while I was in uh, the college library doing my studies, God suddenly revealed to me that he is. And facing the reality of his being, I knew that I was under the condemnation of hell. And at that moment, I called upon Jesus to save me. Somehow I, I got that much from going to church. And soon after I left the library, I found some Christians who showed me from the Bible the truth about Christ and his salvation, and I believed and I experienced joy and peace that only comes from the love of God in Christ. This joy and peace changed everything for me. Everything was changed immediately and profoundly. I saw, I saw the sun, the clouds, the sky, the stars. I saw trees, plants, flowers, all in a new light because they were God's creation and they were the manifestation of God's presence and glory. And suddenly, God was revealing himself to me and everything around me. Uh, and <laughs> was having a great joy and peace that made it all so delightful. I wish I could say that I continued in that joy for the rest of my life. <laughs> but... Uh, I stumbled in some of the same ways that the Apostle John writes about in our text. See, John wants not us not only to be introduced to this joy and peace, he wants us to continue in this joy and peace, in the love of God, in fellowship with God. And so he writes what we have before us in this morning's text. In the Gospel of, of John, chapter 8, we find Jesus speaking to the unbelieving Jews, and he tells them that their true father is the devil, and the devil is the father of lies and a murderer. The devil killed Adam and Eve with a lie. When they followed his lies, he, they died. Lies, lies can, li can destroy life. And of course, lies can destroy fellowship with God. John here is dealing with false teachers in the church. And he recognizes who the real enemy is. That he's the devil. Who uses lies to kill and to destroy what is most precious to us our fellowship with God. And so here we find John addressing how we can be tempted to follow a lie. And there is a progression here. 
the lies become more and more deadly and dangerous to our souls. And there are three of them. First, there is the lie that we can say to others. Verse 6. And then there is the lie that we can say to ourselves. Verse 8. And finally, there is the lie that we can say that makes God a liar. Verse 10. But before John explains these lies, he begins by announcing the truth in verse 5. That God is light and in him is no darkness at all. As John says, this is a message he heard from Jesus. Jesus said in John chapter 8, verse 12, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And in John 12, verse 20, 46, Jesus said, I have come into the world as light so that whoever believes in me may not remain in darkness. So to, to walk in the light, you must follow Jesus, as Jesus makes clear. And, and to follow Jesus, you must believe in Jesus. There are some who claim that they have fellowship with God, but they are not living as disciples of Christ and following in his ways. They are not practicing the truth, despite what they say about having fellowship with God, they are pretenders. They are hypocrites. We can claim to believe, but we can deny Christ by our practice, by what we do. Later in his letter, John explains what he means by this, by our not practicing the truth. He explains that instead of having love for one another in our hearts, there's hate. We are only pretending to have fellowship with God if we harbor hate in our hearts for one another. Hate comes in forms we might not expect. <clears throat> you know, when we spend time together and do things together, there will be occasions when we are offended by what someone says or does to us. Just as we will offend others by, at times we will offend others by what we say and do. <clears throat> but if we hold on to these offenses against us and allow ill will and hate toward one another to grow in our hearts, it will destroy our fellowship with one another. But if we forgive one another, as Christ has forgiven us, then we will begin to love one another as Christ has loved us. And then as verse says, we will be walking, as verse 7 says, we will be walking in the light as he is in the light. And we will have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus will cleanse us from all sin. This fellowship comes about through the cleansing blood of Jesus. Having true fellowship with one another begins by having true fellowship with God. It begins with each of us believing that my sins have been forgiven because Jesus died for my sins, taking the punishment that I deserve because he loves me. And now I... I have fellowship with God because the blood of Jesus, his son, keeps, keeps on cleansing me from all sin. And if, if God <clears throat> so loves, forgives, and cleanses me, how can I withhold my forgiveness and love from someone who believes in Christ? 
from someone whom God loves? I can't. I have received so much forgiveness and love from God that it compels me to love others by forgiving them. This is what it means to walk in the light, to forgive and to love one another as God loves and forgives us. This is the way we will avoid all hypocrisy and pretense and the lie that we would have others believe that we are walking with God when really in our hearts we are living in darkness. But what about the lie that we would tell ourselves? That lie we find in verse 8. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But what does John mean by if we say we have no sin? Well, it's clear by what he says Next, in verse 9, it means that we believe that we have no sins to confess. Do you ever find yourself thinking that you are doing all that is expected of you? That you are doing your duty, especially when you've managed to keep yourself from committing what you know is a sin? You know, you had victory over some sin. Or perhaps recently you've even done something kind and generous. Or, or perhaps you have just recently shared the gospel with someone that God's brought, upon, brought across your path. And you're feeling pretty good about yourself. Well, that's when 1 Corinthians 10 verse 12 has something to say to us. Therefore, let anyone who thinks that he stands take heed lest he fall. If you're like me, <laughs> and you've had that moment where you're feeling pretty, you know, pretty good, then you've already sinned. Right? In your secret heart of hearts, you've taken credit for what you are or for what you've done when all the credit belongs to Christ. And what you've done is you've stolen the credit and glory that's Christ and tried to make it your own. How do we do that? Well, how can we claim any credit when Romans 3, verses 10 through 12 says, None is righteous, no, not one. No one understands, no one seeks for God. All have turned aside Together they have become worthless. No one does good, not even one. Even at our best, we do not love God as we ought. We do not love one another and our neighbor as we ought with the love of Christ. We fall short. If we ever do, Love with the love of Christ. It's not us. But it's rather Christ in us. So if we ever think we're doing pretty well and that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. So to avoid lying to ourselves and deceiving ourselves, we need to examine our actions, our words, our hearts. And we need to confess our sins. And we must do so in the confidence of what God promises here. That he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Because if we're going to search out what is true about the depths of our sinful hearts and own it. If we're going to let the light in and show us what's there. We need to have the confidence that God will forgive us and we already have his forgiveness. 
then we'll have, how should I say, the freedom to see and to understand our sin. To see and understand that sin is really falling short of his glory and how unrighteousness is really falling short in his love. Well, we find a paradox. If I may jump to that, verses 6 and 8. Paradox. I mean, normally we would think that what is claimed in verse 6 and what is claimed in verse 8 go together. The claim that we have fellowship with God and the claim that we have no sin. But that's not true. If we say that we have fellowship with God and we say we have no sin, we are lying to ourselves, deceiving ourselves, and we're worse off than those who do not practice the truth because now the truth is not in us. To walk in the light and in fellowship with God be begins with our living according to the truth that we have sin in us that makes us sinners. Christians walk in the light not because they're righteous. Christians walk in the light because we are quick to repent and quick to believe in the blood of Jesus that cleanses us from all sin. Think about this. God is just, which means he is righteous when he removes our sins from us and cleanses us. Now, how can God be righteous and just in just ignoring our sins? Well, that's not what he's doing, right? <laughs> No, he's, he's doing much more. Through the blood of Jesus, through the sacrifice of his life for our sins, through his death in our place, he has made a redeemer and a mediator for us who has fulfilled the righteousness of God for us. And because all righteousness is fulfilled in the way he saves us, he is righteous and just in the work of our salvation. God justifies and sanctifies us by grace through our faith. And now faith is our victory. But then when Jesus comes, he will finish this work by transforming our body into the very likeness of his own, so that we'll be as holy as he is holy. All this is true of our salvation because God gave us his son, Jesus. God gave us his son to both die and live for us. And now we come to verse 10. To the third and worst lie. It, if we lie by saying we have not sinned, which is most of you are here because you've already you've already gone, you come to that place, right? <laughs> you know you've sinned. But if there's anybody here who doesn't really understand and believe that, this is the worst lie. If we lie by saying that we have not sinned, then we're making God a liar. God has said in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, that all have sinned, and yet we would say that we have not sinned. Furthermore, we are saying that God did not, that Christ did not actually die for our sins, since we didn't have any sins that needed to be laid upon him. Yet God has said that Christ did die for our sins. Furthermore, if we had, have not sinned and Christ did not die for our sins, then what does his death signify? What did it mean? Why did he die? 
Well, it cannot be that Christ died for a sin that he committed against God. God made clear to us that Jesus had no sins of his own to die for. God spoke to Peter, James, and John on the mountain and said to them, This is my Son in whom I am well pleased. And those words were quite different from what he said to Adam and Eve when they did just one sin. He, Jesus, had no sin. And Jesus did not die because he was guilty. He died because we are. He died for our guilt and our sins. And this is the message of the New Testament. This is the message of the gospel. That he is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He reconciles us to God so that we have fellowship with God through his blood. And if we say that we have not sinned, we are saying that his death had nothing to do with us. And in saying this, we are making God a liar. This is what Satan did. Satan made God into a liar when he told Eve that she would not die if she ate the fruit. The lie that we have not sinned is the third lie in our text. And this lie makes God a liar and our darkness complete. It is, as John writes in verse 10, His word is not in us. Well, having heard what, God, what John has to say to us in our text, what does this mean for us? What does it mean then to walk in the light and have fellowship with God? It means that we are seeing what he sees in us. It means that we are saying the same thing about it. That we are confessing our sins. It also means that we are repenting by turning away from our sins and putting them to death. In a real way, we die to our sins because we believe in the promise that when Jesus died, we died with him on the cross. To walk in fellowship with God means that we are believing in Jesus and putting away all our sins in his death. All the lying all the coveting, all the self-righteousness, all the pride, all the following in the way of our lusts and pursuing our idols, all our rebelliousness, all the things that we've done out of hate or revenge, all the things that we would say about others that we would not want said about us, Walking in the light means that we are repenting and believing, believing that we are forgiven, believing that we are cleansed, believing that we are loved by God, believing that we are His. It means that, that we are believing and trusting in the promise that we are one with Christ in his death and in his resurrection. So that we are one in the power of his life. Of his life in us. Believing in, in Christ, we ask. And asking in faith, we receive the love of Christ that enables us to live as his disciples, and keep his commandments. To walk in the light and in the fellowship of God is to walk by faith. Faith in Christ. And this faith brings us God's love and joy and peace. Amen.
Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank and praise you. We give you all the glory. We need to be reminded of these truths that you've taught us again and again. Because, Lord, there are times when we just don't want to admit the truth to ourselves. There are times when we want to um, deceive ourselves into thinking that we're righteous and good in what we've done and that there is no sin or fault to be found in us. And Lord, you know that when we do that, we are hiding in the darkness and not letting your light in to show us what's really in our hearts. So Lord, we ask that you would give us that faith to believe again, to believe and remember all these promises that we have in Christ and to be quick to repent, quick to confess, quick to believe and draw close to you in the assurance we have that you forgive and love and completely, um, or you make us complete in your own righteousness. So Lord, we thank you for this great salvation. Help us to live in a way that glorifies you. For we pray in your name. Amen. Let's join together now in, in singing a hymn of praise to God. Love divine, all loves excelling. Let's stand and sing hymn number 465. 